Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? We're back. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What's up? Today we're going to talk about the beautiful um, input validation stuff. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and this is actually kind of a request. I was still thinking of doing this, but I've done this in my other series. If you can, please drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Uh, that will help me out a lot. If not, just keep watching and I'll appreciate it. Um, and in the description box, you can find a bunch of playlists and a bunch of links that might be useful. Uh, so yeah, just go ahead and do that. But let's just get started. So this is kind of a request. Um, what I want to do is I want to show you how to validate input. So when you're, where you're getting input from C in, you want to make sure it's, it's a certain type or something like that. And then uh, you want to make sure it comes into the variable correctly. So you don't get a bunch of crashes and weird stuff happen if you by mistake wrote something wrong, right? So we're just going to get right into it. The reason I'm doing this this late though is because we've learned about functions, reference variables, and all that stuff. So it's a good point in in time to actually do this tutorial because it's a bunch of code that you have to rewrite if you don't know about functions. But let's just get started. Let me show you the error. So if we have an int choice variable equals minus one, and then we have a while loop here, like this. While choice is greater than zero, so this is going to be our menu. And this is going to be the variable controlling our menu. This is the one we're going to get data into, and then it's going to control our menu right here. And in a menu, usually you, wanna might, you might want to have a switch case and uh, choice. I also want to note that um, using this input validation, is usually only for console applications. Hopefully in the future, sometime soon, you're going to learn how to use an API so you can make windows and stuff like that. And you can, you can, yeah, you can make a bunch of stuff. And, and input is a little different then. You don't really use the console that much. This is more for practicing. And, and if you want to make a console application for some reason, like, or, yeah, just uh, make a console game or something like that, whatever you, whatever you want to do. And by console, I mean the console window, not a game console. So just to, to make sure. Um, but yeah, don't worry too much about APIs anyway. We'll talk about that in the end. I'll, we'll talk about how to go the next step into APIs and stuff like that as we end these tutorial videos. Uh, so I'll show you guys and girls how to do that. But anyway, um, case one. So we're going to remove case zero actually because that's going to quit. The while loop is going to run until choice is uh, while choice is greater than zero. So as soon as it hits zero, we're going to quit. And that's going to be the end of the program. All right. So I'm just going to make STD C out down here. Quitting. Like that. Uh, new line. All right. And here, I'm just going to copy this. So case one. That's going to be, I'm going to write option one here. All right, am I even recording right now? Yes, I am. Okay, option one. Then we're going to just copy paste this whole case maybe three times. So two and three. And in default, we're just going to do, uh, we're going to remove that. We're just going to write no such option. And because that's if we input any other number above three or less than one. Less than one is gonna is gonna quit the program. So, so yeah, there we go. We have a simple menu here. Okay, simple menu running. Now we want to get an input. So std c out um, enter choice and uh, just go ahead and do that. std c in choice. And then we're just going to copy paste this because this is outside the while loop. And then I want to actually keep the program running in this loop. This is the menu, the game loop or whatever you want to have it. And I'm going to put this at the end as well. So once we hit the while loop, we're just going to be working in here. So we want the choice to continually come in, right? And we want to be able to change choice as much as possible. And if I run this simple little program now, just, just simply, I can write uh, one, option one, two, option one, <laughs> three option one, whatever. Let me just change this actually, I forgot. Option two, that was kind of funny. I, was, I wasn't expecting that. It was like, this should change automatically, but nope. One, two, three, and anything above three is a uh, wrong choice. So I'm gonna show you the first error. 
one of two of the first errors, all right? So one thing is, all right, if I'm writing a one, and I write a two, and I write a three, and a four, and a five, and a few numbers together, um, we're gonna have a bunch of things happening at once because that's how C in works. It's a stream. It kind of keeps all of these things together, separated by white spaces, okay? And every white space kind of makes it interpreted as a different input. Get line is different. It, it just gets the whole line. It, it, space is just a character. It's not something controlling the stream. But here, it controlled the stream and it just freaked out. So I can do one, two, and then zero. And then we're going to have one and it's going to be all weird and just crash weird. So we don't want that. And the second problem we get is, oh, I fat fingered. I wrote a character instead of... Uh, it just crashed, right? I, you write a character instead of a number, it just crashes like that. And if I have a 2 and I write some characters, we're going to get an infinite loop. Okay, and you're probably going to have to alt F for that. So, yeah. Still recording, right? Yeah, okay, cool. So there you go. That's a big issue because this C in, the stream, is expecting to get an integer. But you can't trust humans, you, right? You can't trust us. We can do whatever. We can fat finger. We try to crash everything. We go crazy, ape shit. So you just want to make sure the computer needs to make sure that humans uh, don't need to be trusted, right? We could just uh, make a bunch of safety precautions. So for that, we need a function because writing this code multiple times here would make it like 10 or 12 or 20 lines long each time we want to get an input, and we don't want that. That's why we're getting in a function so int get choice choice and this is only for integer choices you can have character choices you can have anything like that uh, but for integers and at the end of the video I'm gonna tell you something that we're probably not gonna talk about for a little while still so it's kind of a over course thing like it's it's way ahead but I want to talk to you guys about it at the end of the video so if you guys want to stick around check that out uh, otherwise just be content with this with integer you can change this to character or anything if you need need it for character right so we're expecting an int choice and we'll return choice okay return choice and we're just gonna put it to zero at the beginning all right and I'm gonna copy paste this in here just like we did before we're gonna get a choice and we're gonna return it but in between we're gonna create this error check so this is gonna check the error error check and it's gonna be in a while loop of itself it's gonna check the C in stream so std C in dot good not so what this means while this is false you can also write it like this false you can remove this so this is a more clear thing. While it's while stdc in dot good, this returns if this went well or not. If that's false, obviously this did not go well, right? So I'm gonna still write it write this in the short version. So while this was not good, we obviously have an error. And then we need to clear the stream. We need to get rid of all the junk that was not good. We didn't get what we were expecting. Let's clear it up. So let's just remove everything. So the way you do that is you write std sin cn dot clear so that clears it of any characters or anything and then you write std cn ignore because a problem with cn is it kind of it kind of keeps new line characters in its stream like trash and this trash ruins our next get line uh, get line command so if you want to write get line after cn you're probably going to get a bunch of weird errors you're going to get a bunch of input you don't want so every time you have a C in, make sure you use clear and ignore. And the way you want to use ignore is you write int max in here. And I'm going to explain this, don't worry. Int max and a new line character. So the way ignore works, it, it asks us, it wants how many characters do you want to ignore and what character do you want to ignore. So it's going to ignore this many of this character. And int max is a big number. If you read it right there, two, one, four, seven, seven, seven. So you're probably never gonna have that many in your uh, in your stream. You're not gonna have that many characters in your stream or new lines in your stream, probably. So that's why I use int max to m just remove as many as you can from your stream. And now it's cleared. So we cleared the stream. Clear stream. 
and then get input again. So once we cleared it, we don't just want to exit, we want to keep asking for an input until we get the correct input. So this is why we have a while loop. While we're still not good, even if I enter something wrong in here again, we're still going to go back up in the loop, clear it, and ask for the, uh, the option again. As soon as it's good, this is going to fail. Okay, this isn't going to work, and we're going to go out and we're going to return the choice. So this basically makes sure we get a correct choice out of this function. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be in here forever. So we're going to keep going until we get a correct answer. And that's great. So a good way you want to make sure the user knows what's going on. Report problem. STD see out error faulty input try again so that's a good way to tell the user what the hell is going on all right so it's, it was faulty we cleared it we got another input uh, until we could return the choice so see how many lines of code that is we don't want to be able to or have to do all of that over and over again every time we want to get an input so it makes it easier for us to just write choice equals get in put get choice there you go I was confused there so get choice okay and you want to do the th same thing here choice equals get choice now this is actually all we have to do for this okay so I want to get a choice one two three everything's working right Oh, I fat fingered. Oh, okay, faulty input. It didn't crash. Okay, that didn't crash. Nothing's crashing. But we still have this one problem where I write one, two. See how we're getting two options? We don't want that. So that's actually the last thing we're going to check. And to fix that, you need to first include a library called Iomanip. Just please go check this library out because it's great. It's got a bunch of stuff you can use to manipulate output and input. And that's what it stands for, input output manipulation. And uh, what it helps us do, one thing is, it helps us set the width of the stream, how big the stream should be. So I don't want to be able to get one, two, three, or four options. I just want to get one thing at a time. Anything else coming after that, I just want to throw that in the trash, ignore that shit. So the way you want to do that, before you start getting stuff in the stream, you write std set w1, or however many options you want. So I just want one. I set the stream size to one and then I get choice. That makes sure that I only get one option. Anything else after that is ignored. So I'm just going to copy this in here as well. Uh, there you go. And you can use this for output as well. You can make sure how the lines and everything is ordered and nice looking using set w. And you've got a bunch of these options you can use in Iomanip. A bunch of functions you can use and uh, change the streams. So you go. So now we set the width to one. Now if I run this program again if I by mistake wanted two things it's not it shouldn't actually do that well let me just see let me see if I made you. all right so there was one thing I forgot actually is you want to actually take this clear stream and you want to put it out here again because like I said this is gonna keep stuff is gonna stay in the stream and you just want to make sure you have a final clear of the stream before you exit the, the this beautiful function so that's why we had a little issue but now it should work so if I run this um, we should be fine because I was only clearing the stream see now the stream only has one thing so what happens is that it only takes the first option ignores everything else because the size of the stream is only one there's only one valid thing in here so if I write a bunch of stuff if I write two and then a bunch of gibberish after we're not gonna have any errors because it's just gonna clear everything out from the stream that was not valid so you can play around with this and try it out. Just this is a final clear of the stream, all right? Because set w after stuff you you put stuff in the stream is still trash, and it's going to be cleared finally by this final clear uh, in the, at the end of the function. So there you go, there you go. This finished function. Play around with this, uh, and you'll see what's happening. Now I promised some of you that I was going to show you a a thing that makes this a lot easier. Because if you want to make a get choice for character, then you have to make a separate function. For character here, you gotta change all these variables and you gotta do a bunch of shit, and then it's gonna be only accepting character. Okay, now this is gonna crash because choice is not a character, it shouldn't be. Um, oh, yeah, it's uh, well, it, it's I'm so dumb, it, it will be, uh, but choice is gonna get a whole different thing because a character is a number, 
uh, like one or, or some some character is gonna have a whole different number from what you're expecting so don't don't do that but still let's just do this uh, int don't worry about it uh, but to get around that problem anyway something we're gonna talk about later is a template function all right a template type name type name T so what this does is a T T here is just a generic generic type it's not a integer it's nothing it's nothing yet it's just a placeholder for a type so this saves us it gives us some time to decide what we want here it doesn't force us to decide what has to be here in this function what we're using what variable it is it will be decided once this is used instead of at at the at this definition right in this definition it's not decided yet once we use it then it will be decided again so the way you use this is you just change all of these variables to T so they they're kind of placeholders for any type of variable and then you don't want to initialize this there you go so you're not initializing it we have TT and nothing else that resembles an integer there you go and it's gonna be red because what you need is you need a parameter in here so I'm gonna do T reference choice alright T reference choice and what you could do you could actually do this void now and T reference choice. So, what I'm doing is I'm actually instead of returning something, I'm gonna have this choice variable, and I'm gonna set it to choice. And what? Well, no, wait. I don't need that actually. There you go. So this is just a reference, and that means that we'll be able to change any variable from the outside in this function, right? So it's a template. Doesn't have a doesn't have a type yet. One will decide that once we use this. So I'm just gonna use it. I'm gonna send in choice here, and it's not red anymore. That means that it knows now which type it has to be. If you hover over, it, you'll see void get choice int in there. All right. If I have a char choice char equals nothing, I guess none, and then I just do choice char in here, and you hover over it, it's gonna say char. See that? So it changes kind of dynamically depending on depending on what input you give it. So what the type of the parameter is, and the same thing in here. I'm just going to do choice in here. So you can use the same function for several different types, and this is a great way to add uh, add numbers together, or different types of numbers together. Just having one add function, for example, or one multiplication function, or anything for algorithms, you can use several types in the same function you don't have to rewrite the function for every type so that's what a template helps us do it's literally a template for a function and once you decide it it's decided but until then you're in the clear you can use any you can design it using any type you want right as long as that type is in here logically sound like you can use input and output to it and stuff like that it makes sense then it won't crash so just think about that but we'll talk about this a lot more later on Thanks for those of you who stuck with me until now. Let's just run this program once just to show you that it works. And a choice one, two, three, four, no option. Let me write a bunch of stuff. One, uh, something random, faulty input, and then zero. Boom. We're good. Again, thank you all for sticking with me. Thanks for all the support. I uh, really, really appreciate it. Again, go please check out the description box. There's a bunch of links, useful links down there. And just drop a like, subscribe if you can. Otherwise, thank you for just watching. I appreciate it. Keep learning, keep working hard. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. All right, bye-bye.